Hey guys, Delo304 here. Today is going to be a very exciting video. We are going to be upgrading my Mac Pro. I've already upgraded the graphics card and we're going to be doing the final upgrade which is going to make this computer about twice as nice as it is currently. Currently it has Intel Xeon 5160s in it which are dual core with four, four megabytes of cache and they run at three gigahertz. Well, we're going balls to the wall. I ordered the best CPUs that this Mac Pro supports. These are Intel Xeon X5365s. They are quad core, three gigahertz, and they have eight megabytes of cache each. So, looking at Geekbench scores online, this should effectively double the performance. And I did run a preliminary Geekbench benchmark so we can have a, a point of comparison. We can see how much these processors inc increase the performance. So, yeah, we have the processors, obviously. We have my Arctic Silver 5 thermal paste. We have alcohol. And we have tissues for wiping the processors off. Now, this is 50% alcohol, so I have to be really, really uh, use this sparingly. So, I'm just going to use it to clean the uh, integrated heat spreaders on both the CPUs, or on these, actually, and the heat sink, of course. So, shouldn't do anything worse, or shouldn't do any damage. But anyway, I am going to be doing clips with this because I don't really, I have no way, I, I estimate that this is going to take about uh, probably a couple hours honestly to do the complete disassembly, so it's like I don't really have a way to record that, so I'm going to just do clips. So here we go. I have to basically do a complete disassembly, so let's go ahead and pull this side panel off. I have to take apart, I have to remove this, this, this. The RAM cards, the graphics card, obviously all that stuff to get to the heat sinks, which are under here. So, well, let's get started. Hey guys, all right. So we've gotten a lot of stuff out. I have Tyler fifty three ten on Skype here, Warrior Nation. Um, I've removed the RAM, the hard drive, the heat sink cover. This was originally here, and I removed the fan assembly from the front. Graphics card, RAM cards, all that good stuff. And here are the two massive heat sinks for the Intel Xeons. I still need to remove this so I can get to it properly. I hope I can do that, or else what I'm going to have to do is go through these slots. You can see where the Allen keys are. Actually, I have to remove. I have to remove this. I can't even get to the other screws. So I have to figure out how this comes out. So yeah. Alrighty. So we've removed the RAM cage. This was a pain in the ass, to be honest. This like took a lot of fidgeting to get out, but it came out, and the fan rotates at a 90 degree angle. Well, that's what it says to, to remove it anyway. So we got that out. So everything is removed, and we're finally ready to get at the heat sinks. So these require three millimeter hex bolts, or hex keys. So I have one of those here. I have a three millimeter hex bit on my iFixit tool set with this rotatable thing so I can actually get in there and uh, remove it so this should not be a problem so I will be back oops I will be back when I have both of the heat sinks loosened up and we'll pull them off okay the heat sinks have been loosened up so they should just come right off there is heat sink A uh, that's a lot of thermal paste there's the Xeon so heat sink A I've marked them, just, you know, very small, so you can't really see it anyway, and the heat sink cover is going to be over it, so, yeah, just mark them so I know which way they go. So there's heat sink A, remove heat sink B. Whoa, now that is a lot of dust, we're going to clean that up, but there it is, two heat sinks removed. So, I'm going to clean this up, and we'll install the new processors. Alright, so I have both sockets opened up. There are the old Xeons, of course, and here are the brand new ones, nice and clean and ready to go. This is some Arctic Silver. We're going to be installing them, so I'm going to pull the old CPU out of the socket. So there's one. I guess I'll do them one at a time, actually, so I'm going to stick these in there. So there's one X5365. Or wait. Let me just make sure I'm doing this right. Okay, so there's one notch. So, should be like this. Yeah. Okay. Oops. <laughs> Whatever. So there's one in. Obviously the um, triangle is in the top right, so 
Sorry. I, I admit that was my mistake. But second one in. Okay, they are in. Now I'm going to apply the thermal paste and reattach the heat sinks. Okay, so now it's time to clean the second piece, of course, the heat sink part. You can see there's a lot of thermal grease on here. That's interesting looking thermal grease. Look at that. Huh, weird. Anyway, I'm going to clean all of this off and we're going to obviously reattach this one. Okay, so uh, sorry for not making another clip, but everything is in, back in. We have the ram cage, we have the heat sink cover, and the fan assembly. This, which was, ironically, this was the hardest part of the whole thing. Getting this thing back on was such a pain in the ass. Turns out you have to loosen this, pull it back a little bit, and then clip this into here to get it to go. But it, it, it's back how it's supposed to go. I just need to put the RAM, RAM cards and the, the graphics card back in, and then we can turn it on and hope it works. Okay, guys, so I got the CPUs in. Let me kill this light. All right, so... It's back together. Uh, sorry I didn't get a whole lot of footage, but we're going to try it out. So here we go. Three, two, one. Here goes nothing. Oh my god, I hope it works. Please give me a ball. Yes! We have a ball. And my light strip fell down. Damn it. Some people said that it double boots. We have a mouse. Oh. We're getting somewhere. Oh. Yes. Yes. Heck yeah, it works. Be right back. Alrighty, so processor upgrade was 100% successful uh, with the, with the uh, help of Colin aka Dusty one we flashed the firmware and we made this a Mac Pro 2.1 so if you go into the system profiler you can see that it says Mac Pro 2.1 and it says quad core Intel Xeon 3 gigahertz so it does recognize the processors before we did the firmware update it said um, unknown in the about this Mac but now it says, obviously what it's supposed to say, quad core Intel Xeon. So, there we go. We also ran Geekbench scores. Let me just go ahead and compare that. So we have the previous score here, which is 1695 in the single core and 6076 in the multi-core. And then we have the new one. Oh, I just made a new picture. So we got 1690, so about the same. That's just variations in the benchmark. And then we got 11,298. And this is actually the benchmark we took before we did the firmware upgrade. I didn't take a screenshot of the second time, but we did the firmware update, and the multi-core went up to 11,600, so we went up about 300 points. So the firmware update did help the performance a tiny bit. So that is cool. So there you go, guys. This computer is, like, friggin' amazing now. It's about on the same performance echelon as my Retina MacBook Pro. My Retina MacBook Pro also scores around 11,000 on Geekbench, so this thing should be a worthy, um, you know, replacement for it. Obviously, this computer isn't going anywhere. In my previous computer update video that I made yesterday, I said that the Mac Pro wasn't going to be used as my main machine, but now that I have the CPUs upgraded and everything else, I'm going to give it a shot again. I'll likely switch off between these computers in the near in the future, but the Mac Pro. You know, obviously, it is now worthy of being my main machine. So there we go. I'd like to thank you guys for watching this upgrade video, and I will see you guys later. Okay, so the setup is back the way it was. Um, unfortunately, the Mac Pro was not enough. Even with the quad-core CPU upgrade, it was still not good enough to best my, my Retina MacBook Pro. I ran Geekbench on this, and the single-core score is about double. Remember, we got about 1600 or 1700 on the uh, Mac Pro, and we got 3000 on the MacBook Pro. And we got about the same multiple multi core score. It was about 11,900, so it was a little higher. But yeah, essentially it's the same. But the thing that did it for me is I rendered a video 
with the Mac Pro. I rendered this video actually before I tacked this clip on to the end. The video was nine minutes long and it took eight and a half minutes to render 20% of that video, meaning that it's about five times slower than real time. In comparison, the Retina MacBook Pro renders video in a, at about real time, so it is far faster. And that is, you know, fine with me because I love my Retina MacBook Pro. I don't care, you know, I mean, I use it as a desktop replacement and it is more than powerful enough to be a desktop replacement. So, yeah, the Mac Pro is going to be just a secondary machine. Not sure exactly what I'm going to do with it. I have, give, I have entertained the thought of running a Minecraft server on it because it has a lot of RAM and it has 8 cores, so it would, be, it, would be, it would be good for running a Minecraft server. Then again, I'm not sure if anyone would really get on it anyway. So, and I wouldn't have it running all the time because this thing uh, ha uses a lot of power. But anyway, that's all in the future. So, yeah, unfortunately the MacBook Pro... I mean, unfortunately the Mac Pro is not good enough to replace my Retina MacBook Pro, but at the same time, like I said, that's fine, because I love this laptop anyway. Anyway, yeah, that's basically it. I got some new accent lighting, if you didn't notice, but yeah, this is an upgrade video. That'll be a different video. Thank you guys for watching. This was a fun project, but it didn't yield, uh, you know, as, as good of results as I would hoped for, but at the same time, this computer is almost 10 years old anyway, so I don't know what I was expecting in the first place. Anyway, yeah, see you guys later.